All right guys, so we're back out here trout fishing again. Today I'm gonna try out a bunch of different baits and I think I'm gonna concentrate on jerk baits. So I got this one right here. I got this one right here, jointed, non-jointed. I also have a few more, a fire tiger pattern, a bigger black jointed bait. So I got all kinds of different ones and I'm gonna start off with these two because these two I've caught fish on before. So I know these work. We're gonna put these out first and get a fish under our belt, hopefully. And uh, then we'll try it. We're, we're gonna mix up. I wanna see what colors work best. I wanna see what if the sizes make any difference. I'm gonna try all kinds of different stuff today. So anyways, we're gonna start off with these two, like I said. Oh, and one other thing, I also brought a downrigger today. So I'm gonna try a bunch of different stuff, a di bunch of different depths, different sizes, different colors, different shapes, and uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. Let's get our lines in. All right, first lure, going in. So I'm gonna start off with just top lining. I'm not using the downrigger yet. Um, I, my theory, I don't know if it's correct or not, but we're going to see if we can figure it out. Maybe we'll test it a little bit today. Hopefully I be more educated after today. But my theory is that in the morning, the fish are going to be closer to the surface because the temperature is a little colder, the surface temp. And, um, oh wow, we're marking a lot of fish right here. Anyways, the surface temp is a little colder. Um, the fish are usually feeding more actively early in the morning. So my theory is that they're gonna be closer to the top early in the morning right now. And then later in the day, they're gonna sink a little bit down deeper in the water column. So that's when I plan to bust out the downrigger and uh, try to drop my, my lures down a little bit deeper. So anyway, enough talking, got our lines in. Oh, I didn't mention, I'm here with Ense and Nick today, so. See if we can make it happen. Alright, guys, the time has come. We did get one bump on uh, my first little pass here, but I'm gonna try the downrigger. I uh, brought it out here, so I wanna give it a shot. Fish just jumped right in front of me. Oh man, maybe I shouldn't put it on the downer. You know what? I'll leave it on the top line for a little bit. All right, guys, the time has come. I did one pass around and I actually got one little bump, but it didn't stick. So I'm gonna drop this down on the downrigger. I brought it, so I might as well use it. So let's start off with. Let's drop it down 20 feet. Just like salmon fishing, once that thing hit gets hit, pops off the downrigger, that rod will bounce up and then it's fish on. I also have one other rod on the other side that's still top lining. So I'm still covering both uh, you know, depths of the water column. So we'll see what happens here. Something really small. Oh my gosh. Look at that. A bass. A really small one. Alright guys, the jerkbait thing didn't work out for me. I might have to just scrap that whole idea. Now we're gonna start trolling grubs. This is like my go-to when I when the going gets tough. So I'm gonna grab some both rods. I just rigged and re-rigged everything. So we're gonna start trolling now and we'll see if we can make it happen. Go, 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 go. 
we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, the downrigger. Come on. Finally. Finally, I'm on. Here we go. Okay, we're finally on. Oh, that took a long time. About two hours after we launched, I tried multiple lures. I tried different depths. But finally I got one. Oh, it just came off. Oh well. It was a little guy. But, um, hey, it's a good start. We got one. Well, I guess we didn't get one, but we got one to commit, hooked him, brought him all in the boat, and then he came off. But that's okay. We're starting to figure him out. I always say this, but we're starting to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Every bite is a clue. So um, that is another step to get closer. And I'm glad it wasn't a big one. If, it was, if I would have lost a big one, I would have been a little more unhappy. But that was just eh, maybe a one pounder or so. Little guy. But breaks the ice for us. Let's get back in. All right, guys, back to Rapala's grubs. I got one on it, but uh, Ense, our buddy here, has just got a few on, on the Rapala, so I'm gonna go back to the original plan, but this time I'm doing a little something different. I'm doing the same thing on the other rod, but this rod I'm gonna put a little bit bigger joints of Rapala and just try it out. Maybe I'll, maybe this bigger uh, lure will get me a bigger fish. I also have a few more ready to go. I think we're gonna go with Rapala's from here on out. So I got a few different colors, shapes, and sizes that I want to try out. But let's try these first and see what happens. Oh, both on the top line. Oh wow! Oh my god! Oh look at that! All the way out of the water. Oh my god, that was out of nowhere. Wow, what a bite. This is a good fish. Literally out of nowhere. That thing just bit and took off. That one, I haven't had much action. I mean, I caught that one on the grub. Um, I had a few other bites, but nothing really that stuck. But then this one literally just went boom and then jumped. Like it took a peek back and it went all the way out of the water. That was epic. All right, Let's see if we can get him in the net now. It's a good one for sure. I didn't mention I switched up my uh, the Rapala I was using. I'll show you here in a second. Should we get him into the net first? I barely have him one hook in the front of the nose. net him too soon. But just like salmon fishing, if you get them next to the boat when they're too green, 
that's when you have a better chance of losing them. So I'm going to turn this tire out here a bit. Got him. Woo! That's a big boy right there. That might be, uh, that's close to my PB trout right there. Oh God, it's been a grind. So like I was saying, we got on the water about like nine o'clock. I had one little one that, you know, I, it came off right here. I count that as a catch maybe. You, you don't have to count it if you don't want to, but one little one on the grub. Other than that, I've been trolling Rapala's pretty much all day for like, very little action. I had one little tap like that, and I think I might have one other little tap. Neither of them got hooked. And like I said, this one, I wish the camera was pointed at the rod because it literally, it hit it, and then it like took off. Yeah, I'm sure you heard the drag. It took off, jumped clear out of the water twice, like at least probably like three feet out of the water. I wish the camera was on that one as well. But yeah, it was crazy. It went totally airborne and then uh yeah fought pretty good um i've said this before but the stock trout they don't usually fight that great because they're not as strong as swimmers as your average like native or wild trout but um but this one fought pretty good oh yeah look at that i barely have them yeah, i gotta put them on the stringer yeah i'm just using four pound test so i mean anytime you're fighting a fish that's larger in weight than the pound test you're using, you're gonna have to, you know, it's a, it's a battle. It's not like you can just bring them in, horse them in. So uh, yeah, definitely, that was definitely true on this one as well. Let me get another stringer here. All right guys, well, there's your stock trout right there. I mean, it's actually not really that long, but just the like, the, the height of it like from the belly up to the to the top of the fish is super tall i mean it has pretty good fin for a stock trout which is probably why it helped it fight so well so that's the lure i caught it on right there that is a fire tiger rapala the smallest one i think that they sell it's a j5 all right one more look at him that's your that's an average or not average it's larger than average but you know in terms of like the way it looks that's kind of how stalkers generally are the fins are a little beat up but they definitely do plant them big so if you're looking to catch a big you know rainbow trout in the bay area this is your best bet um, but anyways like i said this one is not huge and there's definitely bigger ones in here so let's get our line back in and see if we can get another one man that was we literally went from no action all day to just like pure insanity, like in the blink of an eye. Here, let me show you all the lures I've tried. I tried this bigger Rapala, jointed. I tried the smaller one, same color. Let me get it out here. I tried the smaller one right here, same color. This is one I've caught fish on before tried this one i've also caught trout on this one my last two trout videos i think I caught one on in each video this is a little another jerk bait. i think this one's made by daiwa so a little bit different but i mean caught fish on this one too but not today nothing was working the grubs barely worked i caught one little one um so i just had to keep changing up keep changing up i was trying deeper on the downrigger I tried shallow a little bit of weight no weight you know I had to try everything today. And really this one is you know, the only one that I've caught. So it's not like I've found the pattern, but I did finally get one. So hard work definitely pays off when you're, when you're fishing, in my opinion. You know, if you're not catching anything, keep trying different things. You know, it doesn't even matter if it's trout, salmon, halibut, link cup, whatever, you know, any kind of fish. If you're not catching something, try to change, change up. You know, it could possibly be that there's no fish there and you just need to wait for them to come. But in my opinion, it's always pays to just keep trying different things and, until you find something that works. So anyways, enough talking. Let's get back in. Maybe we can get another one here. 
<laughs> Fire tiger, huh? I guess maybe they just want something a little bit different. That is one thing on when you're on a, a pressured lake like I am here. Um, sometimes it pays to just do something a little bit different. You know, that trout has probably seen a thousand lures come by its face. Um, so, and it wasn't hitting those. So something a little bit different, you know, this was a different color. Maybe that made the difference. Just like humans, some, some fish, they just don't like certain foods. Some humans, they don't like broccoli. They don't like Brussels sprouts, but same thing with fish. I don't know, maybe it's not the same thing, but you get the idea. Brought the hat out. That, you know, it means business. What's that? Get one. Yeah, I got one. Good one. Uh, maybe like five pounds, six pounds, maybe. Dude, the bite was crazy. It it it, it was like unlike any of the other ones I've gotten here. It it hit it and it just like was going immediately the opposite direction, and then. It jumped like three feet out of the water. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're on. Other rod, other rod, other rod. Like a good one. Wow. This feels like a good one. We're not moving it very much here. Yeah, I think this is a good one. Feels heavy. It feels heavy. This always happens to me. I don't know why, but every time I point the camera at one of the rods, hoping that that rod gets a bite, the other one seems to get one watch my last few videos it's happened like almost every video yeah, this one feels heavy. usually the smaller ones like you'll feel it'll be swimming around like kind of frantic but not so heavy the bigger ones they're just like moving slower but like you can tell that it's taking a lot more to get them to move this is my lightest rod that I own 500 size reel and four pound test. Pretty much as light as you can go fishing. Pretty much, to be honest. Away from the boat, you can see a spinning pole with a nice one. Yeah, not huge, but it's a nice one. You see it, what I'm saying is, anyway, I'm extending my arm to try and get as far away from the kayak as I can. Oh, it just came off right there. Dang it. That was another nice one. Not huge, probably about the similar size to this one that I have here. Dang. I wanted to get that one. Oh well. Oh dang. Well, at least I got to see it. If I didn't see it, that would have been a tough pill to swallow. Man. Well, at least we're figuring it out a little bit. I think I might have got a couple of lures that are working fairly well and figured out a little pattern as to where I can get these fish to bite. So let's see if I can circle back around and get another one. Again, again, the other rod. Again, the other rod. Oh man, listen to that. Holy smokes. This is a good one. Holy. That one took off even faster than the other one. Every time, I'm telling you, every time I put the camera on one rod, the other one gets hit. Every time, I'm telling you, without fail, 
I think it's the GoPro curse. Could have two rods, otherwise I'd probably catch no fish. All right, let's try and land this one. Again, this one just took off, just like that first one that we got. He hit it. I saw I saw the bite this time. First one I wasn't even watching. This time I saw him hit, do do, and then straight in the opposite direction. I was telling Nick earlier, it's kind of why I think I can catch more fish on the grubs, but I like fishing the Rapalas a little bit better because the bite is just so aggressive. It's just like that, that initial take is so, so strong, so forceful. All right, let's see what we got here. Kind of coming in, guiding him in. Haven't seen him yet. This could be a giant. I'm looking for a 10 pounder. I want to catch, someday I want to catch a 10 pounder, even if it's a stock trout. I don't care. A 10 pounder. A 10 pound trout. That's a behemoth. My biggest, uh, I don't know if I said it in this video already, but my biggest that I've caught is 8 pounds. Someday I want to catch a 10 pounder. Do I have it on this one? I don't know, it's tough to say, I haven't seen it yet. Possible. It's pulling pretty good. This is a big fish, I think. Usually by now you would have seen him. The fact that this one is staying down leads me to believe that this one could be a big one. Pulling me, it's pulling me. It's gonna make me work for it. Ooh, I just see a big flash. Uh, I don't think it's a 10 pounder, but it's a good one. Normally I like netting them on this side, but Oh, this one might might have to do it might have to do a what do you call it backwards net reverse switch hitting net job my time yeah got him oh, no. yeah oh, no. wow look at that one that's a stud that's like a probably seven or eight pounder i think again on maybe my new favorite lure the fire tiger oh he he got that lure pretty good. I don't think he was going to come off. He really, uh, really did himself in on that one. There's our two fish so far. Not too bad. This is the first one that I got. And this is the second one. I think the second one's actually a little bit bigger. A little bit fatter. But I think they're both actually males. They both have a little bit of a, a hook jaw there. Both pretty good heavy fish. I think the one that I lost was also around the same size. Maybe a tiny bit smaller but both like I don't know it's probably a 10 pound stringer at least maybe a little bit more I don't know not too bad we're starting to figure them out here once you figure them out and it's all over let me show you the collection of lures that I was using today this one right here this is the uh, Daiwa something or other I'll leave it linked in the description this one I, I hooked one that came off and I had a couple other bites didn't land on this one but it definitely works. If you watch my previous videos, I've caught some on this. Um, the one 
that didn't work, today at least, was these two. two that, these are the two that I didn't catch anything on today, but for sure this one works. I've caught it on this before. You've seen my previous videos, you've seen this one before. This is just the bigger version of that. And I've got to believe this is, if this one works, this one's got to work too. Just maybe target bigger fish and you won't catch as many of them. And then the one that I used that happened to be working today, maybe my new favorite, is this one right here. This is another Rapala uh, jerkbait jointed. This is the Fire Tiger pattern, green on the top, yellow, and then orange on the bottom. This is actually a pretty popular uh, color for trout fishermen. I've actually never tried it until today. Yeah, obviously now I'm gonna have to add it to my tackle box because it definitely works. I don't know what it replicates. It doesn't really look like any bait fish. Maybe just because it stands out really well, the fish can see it from far away. Uh, maybe that helps, you know, attract some fish in. Whatever the reason is, it works. This is what worked for me today. So check this one out. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna get one of these for yourself and uh, target some big stalker rainbow trout. We went from having a good plan of what we wanted to do today to basically trash canning that whole plan and going to something totally different and then trash canning that plan again and going back to the first one and then we finally got it to work so roller coaster of a day to say the least but we got it done anyways if you guys are interested get one of these i highly recommend it after seeing what it did today so thank you guys for watching see you on the next one